Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Richard Brecciani from Arafura. How are you today, Richard? I'm not bad, Tracy. How's yourself? Well, Richard, this is extremely timely that we're speaking to you with all of the current conflict between the U.S. and China, and now with the Chinese conflict with the Canadians, everyone's looking to Australia for magnet metals. Would you agree? I would agree. Uh, we're a very, very stable country. Uh, we've been saying that for many, many years now, and I guess what we're seeing to uh, seeing play out in the uh, geopolitical sphere really begins to reinforce that fact. Well, we just did a piece actually on how the the U.S. defense law has everyone also looking at Australia. And of course, you're, it didn't hurt that your resource, your gold market has taken off. So we've got investors around the world looking at you. Would, would you not say now is the time to be looking at a company like Arafura? I think it is. Uh, you know, we're dealing in, in a sector that is uh, really starting to grow uh, in the magnet space. Of course, our rare earths going to magnets. Uh, and with all of the changes that are going on or continuing changes going on in the technology space, uh, you know, we're very, very well positioned to be able to feed that particular sector. As, as you know, we're, uh, we're, we're completing our definitive feasibility study and that'll be out in the next couple of months. I guess investors will really start to understand the value proposition that Arafura offers. And for those of you out there in investor intel land and you're going, what are these rare earths? What are these metal magnets? I'll tell you what they are. They're currently controlled by the Chinese and especially with the processing aspect. And of course, Arafura is, you know, well on your way with your processing techniques. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, just recently, we, we put a statement out there that, that's told the market that our entire processing operation will be located in Australia. We're not mucking about with uh, having it in multiple countries or anything like that. We really want to be able to focus our operations in Australia for stability purposes. And uh, actually, um, and I guess your your hearers or your, your listeners will know about some of the uh, some of the things that are playing out uh, in Malaysia right now, which really reinforces our decision to keep it all in Australia. Well, I was trying to find a way to ask you about Linus, so let me just ask you about Linus. We were all surprised to see that production had been shut down because aren't they the only other you know magnet material producer outside of China right now, Richard? Of any size, that's that's correct, Tracy. And I, I guess we were all pretty surprised to see the uh, the decision out of the Malaysian authorities, and uh, and I think uh, Linus were probably the first ones that were surprised, but uh, so were the rest of us. And I guess that's done a couple of things. One, um, it's it's it started to curtail their production immediately. They they'd already been looking for uh, an increase in their um, production capacity. Uh, they had to be given the OK by the authorities, uh, that didn't come. So they have shut down for the last month. We don't know what's going to happen in the future because they've been told that they have to manage their waste uh, uh, more effectively moving forward. Uh, there's a couple of deadlines they have to meet, one in mid-February, one in mid-September. Uh, that may have the effect of, of a uh, longer than anticipated shutdown, which will have a quite a profound impact on the market, considering that uh, they're currently putting around five to five and a half thousand tonnes of NDPR into the market per annum. Well, I've actually been surprised by how little media coverage this this has actually garnered, especially with everything that's happening in the United States right now and in Canada with the Chinese and the negotiations having to do with trade. So with regards to the current global, you know, I would argue shortage of rare earths, or in particular neodymium and presidium. Can you talk to us a little bit about when we might start seeing that as investors and shareholders start seeing maybe, you know, a spike, for instance, in stocks such as yours, for instance? Well, let's hope that it's not just a spike in our stock, but something that, uh, that that brings us up to a higher level for a prolonged period of time, Tracy. We've seen enough enough spikes in the past in rare earths that have really scared a few investors away, and we don't want to see that happen again. But uh, look, I think with our definitive feasibility study coming out fairly soon, investors will understand our uh, investment proposition very, very shortly. I think they'll be quite comfortable with it, the results that we put out there and with the uncertainty sitting out there in, in the market in terms of uh, supply coming from Linus, for example, and also burgeoning demand from uh, the uh, customers of magnet manufacturers in J from Japan and China. Um, I guess uh, there are very, very, very bright days ahead 
for the uh, NDPR space and in particular Arafura. So I think what we're basically trying to say here is that we've got a great opportunity right now with, with your valuation, for instance, for savvy investors to be looking at the magnet material companies presently. What are your thoughts? I think it's uh, it's high time that people came back into the sector. We're probably not seeing enough of that at this point in time. And, uh, you know, we're riding off the back of, of lithium cobalt or the battery side of things. And, of course, the motor uh, in an electric vehicle is, uh, is what drives the vehicle along. So, really, it's only a matter of time before investors begin to understand that investment in lithium and cobalt for batteries is exactly the same as investment in the permanent magnet Cygnus motor of an electric vehicle. Uh, one needs the other. So uh, so an increase in one part of the sector should lead to an increase in the other. Well, I'll tell you, it's a real pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you for joining us. My welcome, and you're welcome.